Hi everyone, this is Deadlock bringing you more Call of Duty Black Ops 4 content for 2018 and today's video is a how-to guide explaining what's new in this COD in terms of your movement, sliding, using your specialist abilities and interacting with the maps in multiplayer. I'll also show you how to unlock your Dia de la Muerto specialist outfit and change your character's appearance. Finally, I'll give you my thoughts on this latest installment of COD after 24 hours of playing the multiplayer only. I'll talk you through what I love, what I hate, the best maps, my favourite multiplayer game modes, my favourite gun and my setup, and my favourite specialist. There is literally so much to cover today, so let's jump right in with some thoughts, starting with my immediate feeling 24 hours after playing the game. And I have to say, whilst I am occasionally prone to a bit of uh, hyperbole, this game is outstanding. There's no beating around the bush here. Comparing this to any other COD that's been released in the last few years is like comparing a diamond to dog dirt. And let's remember what a huge fan I am of World War II as a game, for example. I love that game. I played it literally every day. But Black Ops 4, from the moment I opened the game, it's on a different level for me. The return of some color, bright, cool colors, coupled with a simple menu system, easy to join lobbies. It just blows the previous release away. World War II, it will always hold a really special place in my heart because I met so many cool people playing it. People who, so far, inexplicably, have not bought Black Ops 4. Guys, clan, get this game bought. What's happening? I can only hope that they see the light, but I can officially say this is the last time that I'm going to mention World War II when I'm talking about Black Ops 4. Both are good games, but I've said enough about World War II. I've made enough videos about World War II, and I want to focus on the new game. So that immediacy of the smooth launch, that that is what drew me right in immediately. What I also love is the speed of this game. So far, my experience in multiplayer is that you have to be mobile, you have to be continually moving around and interacting with the map. This is a very marked difference for me in terms of my enjoyment levels. I've often spoke about how I would normally like to pick out those long lines of sight on a map. Using an LMG or an assault rifle, I'd move very carefully when I'm not attempting to cut off the enemy's movements more. In Black Ops 4, it's just not like that. It could be that my personal playing style has evolved right at the tail end of the last release, and I'm into a more run-and-gun approach now, but certainly, assuming that approach to immediately move and keep moving fast around the map in Black Ops 4, anticipating the other team and anticipating those gunfights, it really pushes up the adrenaline and enjoyment levels for me, and that, mixed with a lack of hardcore mode, I think has really speeded up the game. You see very, very few campers or head glitchers, and that is such a marked difference to the last few releases. I love the speed of the game. Another thing I love is the new maps. I'd familiarised myself with the available maps during the beta phase, but now having played all of the maps at launch, I love them. I love the mix of the new and old, as we don't just have the new maps, we have the reimagining of slums, of jungle, of firing range, and of summit. With these four, with the exception of slums, Treyarch managed to choose my three favourite historic Black Ops maps, so I just couldn't believe it when these were the maps that came out. I love the familiarity of playing these old maps, but with a new style, with the revamped game mechanics, and with the new weapons. In terms of the new maps themselves, there are nine of those, which gives us 13 in total. The new nine are Arsenal, which is the map shown in the very first video that I uploaded. Then next is Contraband, which is a South American island. And then we have Frequency, which is a covert listening outpost, which is used for surveillance. Next up is Gridlock, which is a Japanese metropolis where a heist has gone wrong and the road is jammed with debris and vehicles. Then next we have Hacienda, which is a vineyard. Then we have Icebreaker, which is a part salvaged Russian submarine and it's set in some Arctic conditions. Then Morocco, which is set in a small village used by rebels. Then we have Payload, which is the site of an attempt to steal a nuclear warhead. And finally Seaside, which is a coastal Spanish town. There's just so much goodness in the maps. The designs are innovative. I've noticed really quirky little almost Easter egg or hidden routes and paths in the games. And it is so clever and so fun to continue to find new areas of the map as you're working your way through it. In particular, an Icebreaker, which is the part 
sunk submarine being submerged in the submarine half submerged and running through it and finding new avenues it's a real trip and arsenal that allows you to climb through air vents and take on a new perspective of the map these little routes they're everywhere on gridlock there's two opposing sniper areas but they can be easily flanked in multiple directions and this refresher the map styles it's really welcome uh, on contraband you can swim under certain parts and you can break the opposition when they're holding down the map by coming up right in the middle uh, that is really really great I, I guess i do perhaps have one small gripe about the maps and that's that there are very definite choke points and it sometimes does lead to a little frustration if you're playing against a team or a clan and you're not in your team or a clan so you're playing with just some you know some pub random guys you can find it impossible to break the ranks of the other team if they really, really show up the choke points. But it's a small gripe. It encourages you to, to get involved playing with other people and get into parties and things like that. The new maps, though, they look beautiful. They have a lot of colour. They have really interesting routes. They've got very distinct styles. It's really, really welcome to have all these splashes of colour. But I don't feel that it detracts from the gameplay. The game is still the kind of serious first-person shooter that we want. So moving on now a little bit to look at the game modes that I've played so far. I have very deliberately stuck to multiplayer. I played Blackout lots during the beta and I know it's going to become my kind of go-to part of the game. But before I get there, I want to be familiar with the weapons, with the maps. That although they're not the major component of Blackout, they all have a theme and a style and I want to be familiar with how my character moves and feel just really bedded in with the game before I just start devoting all of my time to Blackout. I also kind of want to compartmentalise my videos on YouTube so that in the first instance I'm focusing on the multiplayer and that that is then resolved and then I can move on to, to Blackout and really have some consistent reviews and discussions in my videos. All I've played so far is the Chaos mode which is essentially TDM and Kill Confirmed. I've found that both games, they really suit the maps well. The run and gun approach works on the maps. And whilst all the hype in the game is about Blackout, there is quite clearly a very good multiplayer game here that I think is going to have longevity. I plan to play the objective games next and I'll upload a video touching on these probably as my next video. Before we get to the weapons and my views on the weapons so far, stay tuned in this particular video where I will give you a quick how-to guide on unlocking your Dia de la Muerto specialist outfit. If I've pronounced that wrong, my apologies. It translates literally to Day of the Dead, and I did not look up the translation. I just went for it, okay? So I hope that's correct. Uh, it's a special day in Mexico. You'll have seen it before in the very rubbish James Bond film Spectre, if you're a fan. Uh, just how terrible Daniel Craig is in the James Bond films and how poor that range of films are is a whole other video but nobody has done the job of james bond that sean connery did that's all i'm saying about this and it's not because i'm scottish it's because i'm quite a big james bond fan uh, anyway the outfit is a free unlock for this that was included in the digital deluxe enhanced edition absolutely because that's the edition i have i don't know if it's in the standard digital edition someone was actually asking me about it today thank you for your question uh, i hope i've answered it in the comments section uh, anyway the theme of the outfit and of uh, the day of the dead in mexico it's very garish stylish colors and skulls you'll have seen a lot of people with the tattoos and things like that it's became quite a bit of a phenomenon over the last few years uh, and I'll explain to those that need to know how to unlock that outfit shortly and not only how to unlock it, that's the easy bit, it's actually equipping it that's caused a little bit of consternation with people, they're a little bit unsure how to do that. So guys, we've covered a lot already, we've covered the initial thoughts of the game, what I love, I've had a couple of gripes, talked a little bit about the maps and the game modes that I've played so far, so now let's talk about the guns. Uh, I've been playing with the submachine guns mostly so far. I've had a lot of success with the GKS. The gun is accurate. It's fast. It kind of struggles a little bit at dropping the opposition, which would seem like a fundamental fail, but it isn't really if you equip the gun with a suppressor because the suppressor keeps the gun silent. So before an opponent even knows that they've been shot by you, they're dead. 
Uh, it can also help, I think, to add an optic to the gun for more accuracy. So GKS, get the suppressor on there, get an optic on it, unlock the primary gunfighter, add FMJ or the hybrid mags, uh, that will start to boost you up really well. When I'm not using the GKS, I've been using the MX-9, which is a real beast of a submachine gun. It has a really fast fire rate, it delivers decent damage. Uh, maybe one downside of that particular gun is recoil, but I highly recommend either of the guns that I've mentioned so far, fit them with a suppressor, or FMJ, or hybrid mags, and an optic. And as you progress through the weapons, you can also unlock stock, which is pretty useful to use as well. Uh, other than that, I've dabbled a little bit with the Titan, which is a light machine gun. It feels like it should be awesome, and I think it will be once I unlock more attachments. But transitioning onto it from the submachine gun was a little bit of a culture shock yesterday, especially when I'm actually normally an LMG or rifle player. So I think I need a little bit more investigation there. I did have a lot of joy with the Titan and the Beta. and the games I played yesterday, I felt it was too bulky and slow. But it does drop people and it deals heavy damage, so I think I probably need to explore that a little bit more. I've also rolled a little bit with the ICR, uh, and I've enjoyed a little bit of success with that. I'll do individual reviews when I think they're appropriate of the weapons. If I really find some kind of smashing it classes, then I'll upload some videos on that and give some tips and things as I go. Uh, I guess on now to my final comments on the initial impressions of the game, and that's around the specialists. These are the characters that you use in multiplayer. Uh, I've covered the specialist headquarters in my previous video, so if you haven't seen that, then feel free to have a look. They all have a unique look, and they all have unique abilities and equipment, which you unlock by getting kills, dealing damage, and racking up points. Personally, I've been using the Crash character. His special ability is the TAC-5, and you'll have seen me use that. It boosts all of your teammates' health from 150, to 200 until they're killed, so it gives them a small edge in gunfights. Uh, initiating the TAC-5 also brightens their screen up momentarily, giving them clearer vision. Uh, the Crash's specialist equipment is the Assault Pack. That's reminiscent of the kind of body armour bag drop you used to be able to do before and your teammates could pick it up. The Assault Pack can be picked up by your teammates. They get a lot more ammo and you get some points when they kill people with your ammo. So it's quite a good one to have, I enjoy using it. We've got the return of past specialists and new specialists in the game. So the returning specialists are Battery with their war machine, insane grenade launcher uh, equipment and their cluster grenades. Also returning is the Seraph with their TAC deploy beacon, which allows the team to spawn danger close to enemies. Uh, and the Seraph also has the Annihilator handgun, which just drops the enemy like a bad habit. You'll have seen that in use before, I'm sure. Uh, the Ruin is back with the Gravity Spike ability, which is a you know a brilliant animation, and it also has the Grapple Gun. So that character is a big favourite and one that I used in the beta. A lot of people use it, it's really quirky. Using the Grapple Gun to access hard to reach areas is pretty fantastic. Uh, the Prophet also returns, they've got their Tempest Rifle, and they've also got the Shock Mine, which is complete with that amusing graphic when you get electrocuted by it. Really annoying when you get hit by it, but you know, kind of funny too. Uh, there are new specialists too, and I'll upload a video of them soon. That's going to be one of the other things I'm going to do, I think, after I cover off some of the objective game modes. Uh, their names are Torque, Recon, Ajax, and Nomad, and each has got a unique ability and equipment. Uh, I've covered it for the historic specialists. I'll cover theirs in a little bit more detail. They are pretty cool. I quite like the Torque and his barricade and razor wire that he can drop. That's pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> okay, guys, so thanks for watching. So far, let's get to the unlocking of the Day of the Dead outfit and the how-to guide on the slides and abilities, okay? Firstly, the Day of the Dead outfit. You unlock this when you first load up the game. You're guided to that screen automatically through the store. And if the unlock is available, it will be there and you can choose a specialist and unlock their outfit. You'll have seen me do it in the video yesterday. But this is where the confusion sets in because people are asking, how do you actually equip and wear the outfit after you've unlocked it? So I can tell you that what you need to do is you select multiplayer from the main menu. Then you select menu, which is the old start button. It is the three horizontal lines on it. And it's the button to the left of the X button on your Xbox. You then choose personalization from the list along the top. 
with the RB button, you scroll along until you get to personalization. Then you select a character that you chose when you unlocked the outfit as soon as you loaded up the game. For me, it was Crash. And then you select Outfit under Crash or your character. Then Muertos, which is the dead. Now, when you go back to the multiplayer HQ, your outfit will be equipped. If you watch right to the end here, you will actually see the step-by-step -step guide on your screen. There's just a couple of minutes of the video left, so you can pick that up. For something else that's returning into the game that you might want to use, that you might not be using right now, is the slide function. It's really great for diverting attention away from yourself if the enemy trains the weapon on you, for spinning around and quickly turning on the enemy if they've got you in their sights, and just for entering rooms and things like that. Uh, you use the B button on the Xbox for slide and it's really, really useful, so it's something to immediately get familiar with, I think. Uh, finally, when your specialist accrues enough points, then you can activate their specialist equipment or their specialist uh, ability. So to activate their specialist equipment, you press the RB button in-game when you have enough points to activate it. When you have enough points to activate your specialist ability, you hit RB and LB together. You'll know when you have enough points because your HUD will show in yellow highlighted at the bottom over each of the feature. So you'll see the specialist ability highlighted in yellow or the specialist equipment highlighted in yellow and you can unlock it and use it there and then. So guys, I hope this helps. Take care. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Next up is going to be a video covered in the objective-based games. Then it will be more on the specialists. Then we're probably going to have a quick couple of weapons and class ones. Then we're going to move on to the big one, on to Blackout after that. Take care. Keep enjoying Call of Duty. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, guys. Thanks for watching. Charlie Fox.